Well, hey guys, welcome to Mountain Blade Walking Conquest Reforged Edition Story Mode. Alright, uh, this is Anno Domini 867. We are in the 9th century. Long ago, long gone are the lights of Rome, absorbed by the tide of time. Yet several centuries remain until the golden age of knights and princesses to come. It is a brutal, dark and ruthless era of raw strength and survival, where men go to bed every night, paying to see a new day. It is the age of the Viking, the clans of Ireland, Ireland, the ascension of Wessex, Wessex, uh, the emergence of the kingdom of Alba, Alba, I have, oh, Alba, Scotland. Um, it awaits you. Yeah. Uh, we will be a foreigner, like last time. Um, I'll be a sanguine with wisdom, noble, martial arts, traveler, and I will be a Christian. You are a youth. You are full of energy and eager to change the world around you. According to Galen's ancient temperaments, your personality is sanguine. Its element is air and its hypocrite's humor is blood. It is associated with people who are optimistic, imaginative, artistic, cheerful, sociable, rational, and pleasure-seeking. These people are also forgetful, impulsive, and unpredictable. According to the four cardinal virtues recognized in the writings of classical antiquity, you most often exhibit wisdom, also called prudence. It governs actions according to the dictate of reason in order to choose the right response to any situation. Wisdom implies the ability to judge in advance the probable consequences of one's actions. You are a foreigner, you come from, a f from far away seeking to get to know the north of Europe, a world dotted with dozens of small kingdoms all harassed by the Vikings. You were born years ago to an impoverished nobleman. You came into the world as son of a declining family of influence. By then, the estates were gone and only the house in which you lived remained as a possession. However, despite your hardships, your parents gave you a good education, preparing you from childhood to the chance for the chance to become a companion to royalty. Your family baptized you into Roman Christianity, and you were fascinated with by the stories that the priest told when he visited your village. Since those days, you remain devoted to that religion. Christianity is based on the scriptures, the testimony of the Jesus life, and the teaching, teachings of his apostles. You spent your youth as a page at a nobleman's hall. You were chosen to be a companion to one of the wealthiest noblemen of the kingdom. You so were given a place at the hall, serving the more senior members of the household. Your first lessons were in humility. In compensation, there were all sorts of entertainments, chess games, gossip, bards, visiting to recite the poems of great deeds and loves. You were drawn most by the world of conflict and competition. You played rough games with other children, battling each other with sticks or swords. Such games provided you invaluable lessons for your current life. Formerly, you were a traveler, responding to the call of the road. You traveled from one village to another, trading whatever you could find. This is not a wealthy life, but you have become a master at getting a good price from even the most miser miserly of splinters. Soon you will be able to create your own trading empire. I didn't know the traveler was a trader, but whatever. Uh, I just picked these without even reading. Um, so, I don't know if in Russia they, they had Christianity at uh, 860 whatever, because I know there's Russian Vikings, but let's presume that we are from Russia. Uh, Christ from a Christian village and uh, uh, well not really a village but like a like a town it's not a city but a town and our father was pretty much the old like the I don't know whatever uh, ruler of the town and uh, we grew up in, in the court and then uh, we decided to travel the world and uh, when we came back we found out that our mother was ill so that's why we started to go to freeze. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll pick that one. That looks nice. And since we're Russian, figure uh, Mishkin. Let's put some points in there. Uh, 
intelligence. Uh, we have Seeking, that's good. Um, I'll keep it at 1 for now. Iron Flesh. Uh, I want some looting and some inventory management. Trainer's fine. Pathfinding would be nice. Surgery. Um, I think for now I'll just increase these because these are important. Well, okay, we have some points. Yeah, let's put one in trade. And one in surgery. Okay, uh, I'll be one-handed. And maybe some throwing as well, because I see I have some throwing skills. And since, you know, whackings are throwers. And this guy looks fine, I'll just change the color and make him a bit younger. Don't want to mess around with this too much. <clears throat> you can't sleep. You can hear the constant crunch of the boat hull. Smell sea brine, smell sea brine and feel the breeze caressing your face, but your eyes are closed and refuse to open, and your mind keeps dreaming, remembering other times, a past life that feels far away and that you remember less every day, even though not many, not many months have passed since your departure. Now the future is uncertain, your journey has brought you to the Frisian Sea hoping to find news about an old sorcerer who takes care of all ills because your mother is sick. For her you left everything behind a world behind a world you knew like the back of your hand and paid for passage on a north boat. A paunchy merchant man. It's slow and clumsy, but its captain has promised to take you to the remote part of Freeze where the sorcerer lives. Your mother travels with you. Nobody else has joined you. Her illness progresses and there are days when she no longer recognizes you. But she appears to be completely sound at other times. Every morning you wake up not knowing which day it will be. Will you be able to converse with her or will you have to tie her to a post so she does not fall overboard? Oh dear. You need to wake up though your eyes oppose you and your mind boils with fever. One more effort, your eyelids obey. The captain. West through Hall, a figure, Michigan. Are you well today? You were, moving wildly, you were moving violently in your sleep and saying incomprehensible things. My sailors thought you were being tormented by a spirit. Where am I? What is this place? Oh, this is bad. You don't remember anything? My name is Avo Leof. I am the captain of this ship, the wooden, the wooden Rick. You embarked with us in Freeze some weeks ago, paying well for us to take you on. Oh, it's coming back to me now, but perhaps you can remind me why I'm here. Now I'm really starting to worry about you. I don't know the details, but do know that you worry for your mother. She's sick and you were taking her to a priest of great healing ability in the Frisian port where we are going. Thanks, but it's light out. Shouldn't we be under full sail? The boat is not moving. What is happening? Why have we stopped? We found a bit of wreckage, some half-sunk ships. Looks like there was a fight here recently. I have my men checking out the situation and looking for survivors. Poor bastards when have had a chance against Viking's, Viking longships. We'll be on our way soon enough though. Well, finally a bit of excitement. I think I'll go and help them. May we talk later, sir? I need to give some orders to my men. In this tutorial you will learn the basics of movement. Eh, whatever. Talk to Bodo. Hey, mother. She has aged several years since her illness began. She's so frail that she looks like she would break if you touched her. This is not the woman you know, just a vague memory of her, but she's still your mother. My son, it is such a nice day. The sea is so bright. It is truly a pity to have all these shipwrecks spoil the sea. And... Yes, mother, I'm glad you're well today. She smiles and looks at you with love. Not only well, but happy. I'm glad we made this trip, but we must remember to be home to make dinner. Your father will expect it. Mother, we are going home right now. I love you. Yeah, I don't want to tell her the truth. Let's go talk to Bodo. Good day, Fyodor Mishkin. It's good to see you that you are well. You were giving us a fright, talking in your sleep. I'd hate to be the one troubled by such dreams. All is well, believe me, it was just a stupid nightmare. I agree completely. How do you know? You didn't, you didn't see it. Fortunately, I usually do not remember my dreams when I wake. Well, it's good to see you up and about, friend. Ah, I remind you who you are? To tell the truth, my mind is still a little foggy. Why, well, I am Bodo. 
I hail from Cantabria in the kingdom of Os Asturias. I presume this is Austria? In the north of the land that the Romans called Hispania. Well, wouldn't Spain, in the north of Spain be France? I don't know. Um, I mean, the north of Italy would be somewhere like Germany, uh, uh, Austria and such. Anyway, uh, we become well acquainted on this voyage. Um, then I know you told me your story, but I'd like to hear it again. <clears throat> Perhaps some other time. I think right now I want to keep an eye on the horizon. I'm not as convinced as the captain that stopping here is a good idea. Uh, I'm worried as well. I'm glad you're watching, my friend. I'm glad you are watching, my friend. And I'm glad to do it for you. We've become such good friends on this trip. I'm sorry we will soon part. If we meet again in the future and you need my help, you have it, my friend. Excellent. Next we will cover attacking with weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's played hand and blade. Let's go fight this guy. Uh, good day to you, lad. The captain hired me to protect this, his ship. Here, on matters of defense, my word is the law. Uh, I see, you must be the veteran. Can I learn about fighting from you? Indeed you can. I don't have anything better to do while we aren't in combat. I can find you some opponents to practice with if you like, or if you have any questions about theory of combat, feel free to ask. I thought we learned martial arts, but whatever. Uh, let's move to practice. Good, it's good to find someone eager for practice, so let's see what you will do. If I may say so, I see great warrior in you. Some sailors have been idled since we stopped, let's see if one of them could help us. A sailor will fight you, are you ready? Uh, yep. Here you go then, good luck. Let's beat this guy. By the way, uh, I'm playing on normal difficulty. Uh, uh, like normal everything, normal speed, normal health stuff. <clears throat> Everybody back on the ship, hurry! Uh, oh, what, and we're in trouble. What's happened? Shh, keep quiet. Listen, we're in danger. As we were watching your fight, two longships arrived. Now I can see the banner. It's Swan Bullneck. Ah, damn it. You'd better pray to whatever gods you worship. Hell, you may as well pray to those you don't. Don't ma it won't matter at all if he catches us. This is terrible news. What shall we do? You notice his hands shaking from nervousness. I think we're passing by. If we stay still right here, they may just think we're another bit of the wreckage. That's our only hope. Well, you're the captain. Uh, sure. Uh, now he looks scared. Someone spotted us. They're turning this way. Nothing for it but to move. Cut the anchor and start rowing. Oh, what an it's no use. Help. Oh dear. Um, well, figure Michigan fight. I am yet with you. Okay. Hey, we have Bowen. By the way, I play in first person. Um, and also in terms of difficulty, I disabled stamina and- Oh, uh, what the hell? Now, that never happened before. <laughs> I would always kick some ass, but okay. Um, strange, you've been asleep, but you can't remember any nightmares. What you remember- Oh, maybe this happens because- Maybe this is scripted? Because I- recently patched this game and I haven't played on the latest version. The last time I played it was, like, I don't know, 2, whatever. Um, and you could fight, but maybe we got killed or got unconscious straight away before you could see who dies and who gets unconscious and whatnot, so it's more like story, like it's, it's, it's better suited for the story to, for us to get, uh, get unconscious first. Anyway, strange, you've been asleep, but you can't remember any nightmares. What you remember clearly are whacking warriors boarding the wooden wreck, plunging their weapons into the bodies of the captain and sailors, and Bodo, the Cantabrian, defending himself like a lion until cornered. You hear his words in your consciousness. Fear Mishkin, fight, I am yet with you. You remember the death, your death, when your enemies fell upon you. You still feel the wooden floor of the boat 
The wooden floor of the boat smashed into your cheek before you could hardly breathe a goodbye to the world. Your eyes met your mother's just before the end as a huge Viking dressed in iron. Could he be Swan? Cracked her head with his spear and threw her body into the side. Oh dear. You crawled, leaving the trail of blood, preferring to give your body to the fish, but you remember no more. Are you dead? But if you're dead, why do you feel the sore muscles of your body, or the heat from a nearby fire? How is it that you can clench your hands, open your eyes, and distinguish the beams of a roof over you? And if you're alive, who has saved you, and why, and how? He's punching me. <clears throat> Healer. Ah, you're awake. It's good to see that you can still walk. Uh, you're lucky, foreigner. Some god has watched over you. When they brought you here, you were more dead than alive. My head hurts. I do not remember anything since I fell overboard from the boat. You have been close to death, unconscious for two weeks. The Sing a fisherman found you near the coast, clinging to a plank. You were barely breathing and your body was covered with wounds. They brought you here so that I would heal you. Ah, uh, the Singa, the Diamond Freeze. Are you the old sorcerer, the man who can cure all diseases? No, one man only could claim such fame. People from around the world came in search of cures at his door. They were so numerous that came up the trail to the Singa, but that man died a year ago. I am Abby, Ab his son, a simple healer. A year ago, you say? Damn, I lost everything. This trip has been for nothing. Uh... Many like you have been here since the death of my father, leaving everything for the promise of a cure that I cannot give them. I'm sorry, but the skills of my father died with him. Do you know if the fisherman found more people? Maybe my mother is still alive. Didn't we see her skull get cracked? They brought only you here. I don't know more. You should go ask at the Singa. The village is near. We need to talk to Thonkrook. Very good, healer. I'll talk to Thonkrook from the Singa. Farewell. The Singa is near here. Good luck, foreigner. Thonkrook is a good man. He will help you. Cool. Welcome to the Viking Conquest Reforged Edition. Um, in the storyline, you start as a hero with an uncertain fate. Please read the following carefully because the gameplay varies slightly from the sandbox campaign. By the way, we are in Freeze, which is here. Which is... Um, Germany? No? Uh, well, I think that's where the old Anglo... or not Anglo, but the, whole, the old Saxons used to be, right? Or is this France? Because France should be there. I don't know, three cents of crumbs. I don't know, whatever. I'm not good at geography. The story follows its own development path and the decisions you make may affect the world around you in addition to standard game mechanics. This means you won't be able to freely join any kingdom or serve any king except when allowed to do so. The behavior of the kingdoms, especially those important to story and in, his and in history, will follow the chronology of historical events as much as possible. As a result, these kingdoms may not be destroyed if they were not defeated historically. Moreover, you won't be able to get rid of your companions, grant them thieves or fives, thieves? I'll just call them thieves, or make them vassals as long as you're playing, you're playing the storyline. As many of your companions are important to many missions, it is critical that they remain a part of your warband. It took many months to build and research Viking Conquest storyline, using historical sources, sagas, and deep love for Viking world. We do hope that you enjoy it as much as we did. Cool, thanks. Alright. This is us. We have a little dagger knife and some angle tunic clothes. Also, let's go to the singer. The singer is a small fishing village on the coast of Freeze. People here are hardworking and still very prosperous. Although foreigners no longer come as they did before, the death of the old sorcerer. Uh, when you go into the village, you see a lot of activity around, apart from the busy villagers. Some warriors sworn among the people, exercising the arts of war, perhaps preparing for an adventure beyond the sea. Maybe you can ask uh, the warriors for practice in the various aspects of combat. Uh, it's disappeared. Whatever, let's go talk to our friend though. Well, he's not our friend yet. 
Thorncrick. Welcome to the singer. Oh wait, you're the man we found in the sea. Nice to see you, most assuredly. I didn't dare hope to see you alive again. That healer may yet prove worthy of the legacy of his father. God rest his soul. Uh, are you Thorncrick? My name is... Uh, Figur Mishkin and I am in depth of the singer. That isn't necessary. No death, my friend. Rescuing others found fr uh, others from distress at sea is the duty of every fisherman. You found you unconscious, clinging to a plank and led by the tide. Fortunately, you were not far from the coast. We were, we were traveling on a ship, the wooden wreck, and were attacked by Vikings. That's the reason you found me in the sea. I know the wooden wreck. It made landfall at the singer many times because it had passengers seeking cures for the most terrible ills. The father of the healer who, is, who has healed you was a man well known for his skills in many parts, and thousands of people left everything to come here. Now that man has died, and unfortunately his son does not have his father's magic. I'm sorry to hear that the wooden wreck was attacked by Vikings. Um, my mother traveled with me. Did you find other people or corpses where you found me? The sea brings swollen corpses and wrecks to our shores sometimes, but nobody lately. Usually Vikings take prisoners to sell as slaves. Thorncrake, our ship was attacked by Sven Bullneck. Have you heard of this name before? His eyes wide widen. Swell Bullneck? Oh my good god, it is a miracle then that you are alive. Sven is a murderer and his men are demons. He talks no he takes no prisoners, kills the whole crew, and burns the ship with the corpses inside. He does not look for riches, Sven is more ambitious. Each year we pay a lot of money to him to leave us in peace. <clears throat> oh dear. He killed my mother, so now I'll kill him. Tell me where I can find Sven. Where can I find Sven? Yeah. Um, he looks frightened. To seek Sven? Are you crazy? You're not listening to me. Look around. See those men training here? They are hardened warriors sent by our Jarl. They are here to defend us from Sven's attacks and we are lucky. Other villages don't enjoy as much importance to the Jarl. No, no, I know nothing about Sven. Thorny, I need your help. Don't you know I can help you kill Sven? He doesn't want... I guess he maybe does. He rubs his hands nervously. Figure Michigan, look at yourself. You're weak. Puny. Puny? Almost dead just weeks ago, was saved by a low life fisherman. You lost all your possessions. You don't have weapons, resources, or men. I don't know where your where Swan keeps his hideout, but if you go there someday, you will meet your death. Uh, I don't fear death, Thorncrake. I know what I want to do, and it is to kill Swan. Farewell. Um, hey, you got some money and morale. I see determination in your eyes. Here, take these few coins and my advice along with them. Find a job and forget about Sven. Otherwise, feel free to ask the Jarl of Kenemer. He might be able to help you. Jarl of Kenemer. Cool, thanks. Um, maybe you can ask the warriors for practice in the various aspects of combat uh, to talk to a character. Oh, never mind. Boring stuff. Cool. Let's go. Jarl Rodulf Haraldson. Do I know you? My name is Figur Mishkin. I'm at your service, sir. I'm Jarl Rodulf Haraldson, a vassal of the Kingdom of Frieze and the Royal of Kenemara. I don't recognize the device on your banner. No doubt another foreigner come to our lands, as if we didn't have so many here already. Damn, bro. Oh, he doesn't like me. Uh, Jarl Rodulf Haraldson. Thorncrook from the Singa told me that you could help me. Uh, hey, he likes me a little bit. Thornleg is a good man, one of the few Frisians who have gained my esteem. If you come in his name, I will listen to you. Do you know where the wooden do you know the wooden rick? I traveled on this ship with my mother, but we were attacked by Sven Bullneck. Sven the bloody at Sven the bloody attacks merchants. Sven the bloody? Ooh. Sven the bloody attacks merchants merchant ships near our shores, waiting for us to pay him every spring, but not this year. Do not worry, I'm gathered. I'm gathering troops to hunt for him. Now I have things to do. I desire to join the hunt. My goal is to avenge the death of my mother. Yep. Uh, he looks into your eyes, taken by surprise. I'm not sure. How many men and ships do you have? My arms, my my uh, my my arms are my men, and my courage is my ships. Together we will kill Spunbull Neck. Yes, yes, I see. Well, look, I'm very busy. Why don't you come see me later in ten years, for example? Uh, you just cannot see it now, but you need me, sir. I'm not afraid of Sven. Oh, he hates me now. Someone who is not afraid of Sven is a fool, but maybe I should give you a chance to prove your worth. 
Are you indeed so motivated by honor? Alright, I can do this. I'll give you a place among the men who will face Swen if you prove your worth. It makes the sign of Odin the, the word of bad luck. There's a problem I need to solve. Not far from here is a monastery of Christians. Odin damn them who have sent a request to intercede in a land proper property dispute. Honestly, I care very little about their problems, but the king wants Christian priests happy to avoid Christian rebellions. Anyway, my men are busy protecting important things like the people on the coast, so you go in my name and make the arrangement that best suits my interests. The most important thing is to keep the monks quiet. I do not want them stirring up the people versus rightful Danish dominion. Uh, thank you, my lord. I will not disappoint you. Are you still here, man? You have a mission completed and your revenge on Swan will be that much closer. Now get out! You arrive at the monastery. The place stretches out wide with a church, rooms for the monks and their servants, and large gardens with livestock pens. This place certainly treasures wealth. Cool. Hey, Abbot. What may I do for you? I'm here for your petition to Jarl Rodolf Haraldson. Please explain what has happened. The abbot looks you up and down and convinced expected uh, some other person. The Jarl or one of his close associates. May I ask who you are, sir? My name is Figur Mishkin. Jarl Rodolf Haraldson is busy, so I'm your man. Welcome then. Listen to me. We need your support. The abbot, after rummaging through his books, draws out a letter to show you. Some weeks ago, a monk found this document in our archives. It is a letter where a previous lord three generations back donated land next to the monastery to us. You can read it. You don't know how to read, but feign to the but. Um, didn't I get education and such? How can I not read? Well, I don't know how to read, just tell me what it is about. Well, the document is right and proper. With witnesses and donor name, the problem is that currently a family resides on this piece of land. They say the land has been theirs for generations, but the monastery owns these plots and we want them to leave. Uh, well, call the head of family and the monk who found the document. I want to question them. The abbot sends for all parties to come to the chapel so that you can hear all sides of the story. For your part, you take advantage of the waiting time to observe the work of the scribes, text ornate with gold. <clears throat> but I cannot read. Alright, farmer, monk. Sup. Well, have you talked to them? For us, these lands are very important and the Yara's happiness, you must know, depends on ours. Are you ready for a verdict? Uh... Hello, farmer. Greetings, sir. Thank you for your help. Uh, I'd like to listen to your story. Uh, I know nothing. I inherited the land of my ancestors. I don't have documents to prove it because it has never been necessary to prove that it was mine. Okay. God bless you. I'm the monk who found the document. There's something strange with this document, don't you think? I'd like to listen to your story. Uh, I'm just... I'm just a scribe in the monastery. I copied the ancient Roman texts while looking for an old useless parchment to scrape and prepare for another document. I found this. There's something strange with this document, don't you think? I don't know. It looks correct to me. I think you're lying to me. I'm not a liar, sir. The document is correct. Okay. <clears throat> How about you? Uh, what if you're lying to me? I'm not a liar, my lord. Okay. Well... Uh, they me serve you. Okay, abt. Um, yes, my word is that the land belongs to the monastery. Well, okay, so Jarl wants us to say that the land belongs to the monastery, to the Christians. But in that case, the farmer will lose his land, and that's not a very Christian thing to do. Belongs to nobody, that's just a silly thing. Belongs to the Jarl, well, he doesn't want that. Uh, I think I'll just say that belongs to the farmer. Piss off the Jarl, but I mean, I want to keep my honor. Failed. What? That land is ours. Hey, I go and gain reputation. Well, if the Jarl wants problems, he shall have them. Leave now. Aww. 
now the church hates me. Right, so let's go back. Hey, well, figure Michigan, what is it? Y'all are hopefully Harold said, I went back to the monastery and made things right in your name. You gained two renown, but he hates me. Yes, I know, the monastery sent a messenger with the news. They are very unhappy and blame me for sending you. They say that everyone will know that I am unjust. Damn you. No one can think that you are unfair when justice has been done. Oh ho, a gentleman with values. Justice is all very nice, but this world isn't right and won't recognize it. The clan wasn't important, but good relations with monastery are. Do not upset me again. What about our deal? May I join the hunt now? <laughs> I mean, I fail him. Err, uh, not just yet. Now I need you to do something else to prove your worth. This time as a warrior. There's a fabulous Frisian called Theodron who has been causing me a headache and I do not have the time right now to take care of him. I'll give you permission to recruit on my land, also I will send a letter to the king so he may likewise allow you to recruit men and freeze. Cool. Renown. This is what I want you to do. Take this silver and recruit 15 men, the cheapest are village idlers or refugees at the monastery. Sometimes spare men are available at farmsteads. Once you have men, come back here and I will tell you how to find the other. He scratches his nose. Well, good luck now. Now we have the things to do. Um, he said that the cheapest people are from villages, but uh, this next mission will be kind of difficult, so I'll recruit people from castles. Yeah, like these guys. Recruiting warriors. You now have a strong party of men. Return to the Jarl for further instructions. So I recruited like 19 guys, I think. Yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, these were from the village, I think. And these guys were from the cities and whatnot. Hey, there's two Jarls here. Uh, that's the guy we need, right? Ah, it is you again. What is it? Uh, I have warriors that you asked me for. Yay. Hey, he likes me again. Well, a little bit more. Well, you gain, you again have proven useful. As I mentioned, excuse me. As I mentioned before, there's a rebellious Frisian called Theodred who has been a headache for me. I do not have the time right now to take care of him. You'll do it for me. Oh, and here's some money to equip yourself better. I can't allow people to think that I employ such shabby help. Uh, I like the sound of this. To tell you the truth, I don't care if you like it or not. You offered your services and I offered you a job. Do this for me and your revenge suit upon Sven will be closer. Take this money and travel to Dorstad. There is a man there who knows all about this. His name is Renninghard, and I hear that he cowers in the mead hall between the prostitutes and the other drunks. He would not talk to my men, but maybe you can find out where the rebel is hiding and kill him. The other must die. Uh, it shall be done. Farewell. Are you still here? Okay. Uh, let's go. And actually, I might recruit some more men because that mission, like I said, is pretty tough. And I'll recruit some people. Never mind. Okay. Uh, first, let's buy yourself some weapons. Um, I'll get this cheap spear. And the shield, I would want a shield. Mm, the shield is pretty expensive. Never mind, I'll just have a spear. And. Yeah, our clothes are fine. Um... Yeah, there's nothing else I can really buy here. I guess I can buy some gloves. Yeah, let's buy some gloves. Okay. Now let's go talk to the dude in the meat hole. Running hard. Why is there two people here? Oh, Ransom Broker. Hello! What do you want? Merely to pass the time of day, foreigner. If you're not otherwise engaged, he's a foreigner. Ah, well, if you must know, I shall tell you. Not many people around here will listen to good old Running Hard. He was born in Dorstead, 
See, he's not a foreigner. My life has not exactly been easy, but I was happy until my wife and two children died of a plague two years ago. Aww. I had a farm, you know, and I, and I sold it because everything in it reminded me of them. Now I'm a well drunk and an idiot and no one wants to be with me. Well, until we came along. Rena heard the fools and call me here. Shit, I shouldn't even be here. Take another drink and tell me why you should not be here, Renegard. He takes the meat just jug to his lips, drinks long, and then he just looks at you. I'm not sure what we have in it. I'm not sure that we have anything to talk about. <clears throat> you look like someone that would appreciate a, a friend, but I can go again. Please do not leave. Let's keep talking and drinking together. All right, I will stay with you, but tell me why you should not be here. Hey, he likes me. He smiles, drinks again, and you see the mead overflow his lips and course down his chin. He belches. When my family died, I joined the rebels, tough, tough and brave men who struggled to free us from the oppression of the Danish. I fought at their side and I was happy because being with them, always busy and fearing death, made me forget what happened to my family. What a coincidence that he starts talking about the, the gang. Uh, why are you no longer with them? He pushes the jar aside and drops his head. I betrayed them, saw me here, fra drowning my sorrows in mead. They were my brothers, my friend. My friend, I sold one of my brothers to the Jarl of Kenemer for money. I sold Theodold, our leader's brother. Now they want to kill me, and I am awaiting my death as a betrayer. Damn, that day I fell for the Jarl. Damn, Jarl. Ooh, do not trust the Jarl. What can you tell me about your leader? Theodred? Don't you know him? I can't describe in words what kind of a person he is. The men would die for him. It is true, the Danish are afraid because they know that someday Theodred will raise an army of Frisians and throw him out of our land. How can I find them? You cannot find them. They do not want to be found. These men fear the Jarl. Theodred only allows people he trusts to join. Um, I am trustworthy. Ask me anything you want. Uh, he seems not to hear you, joy crosses his face and an idea that ha he has in mind. Look at me and listen. There are many people having a hard time during the rebellion, particularly the many widows and orphans. There's a woman in Dorstead who collects donations to care for these widows and orphans. Go see her and help. I think you're a good person, but show me. Talk to this woman, her name is Ada. You can find her in the shop on the wharf. Make a donation in my name, and maybe this time Maybe this will help my people see me with different eyes. Okay. Let's go find that lady. I think it's that one there. I need the helmet. Ada! Welcome, sir. What can I do for you? A man sent me to see you. His name is Renegard. I know who Renegard is, and it is not a name that is that it pleases me to hear. I have no time for people coming from him. Wait, I just want to make a donation to the widows and orphans in this town. She looks puzzled and surprised. Er, I do not expect this from Renegard. How much is your donation? If you accept 100, 300, 600. What if I have 500? Uh, I think 300 pennings will allow many families to get through the next winter. Yeah, let's meet her in the middle. Yay! She smiles, happy for your donation. Many people will be grateful to you and Renegard. God bless you. Anything else? Uh, nope. Thank you. Uh, Renegard. Hey, he likes me more. An orphan came to f came in to thank me for helping her family. You're a good person, Fidel Mishkin. You caused me to feel less guilty and a little happier. I'm a trustworthy person, as you can see. Now where are Theodor and his men hiding? Why? This is a secret I'm not willing to reveal. Oh, come on, man. If you talk to theater about his about this, surely they will understand and forgive you. Hey, he looks at you with tears in his eyes. Thank you, Figur Mishkin, you are right. I need to talk to them. I will join you. Theater's hideout is in the mountains in the east. Let me show you the way. You're welcome, let's get going. Thank you, my friend. I know I'm rough. Thank God for people like you giving me a chance. I will earn your respect. You will discover that you can trust me. Okay, get your stuff. The way the way awaits us. Uh, good. Give me a few moments to prepare, and I'll be ready to move. Hey. Okay. How much money do I have? Oh man, I don't have a lot. I want to buy like a child or something. I can, but nah. Ooh. All right. 
Let's go attack the hideout. Or at least try. We are in the Kingdom of Freeze, where Dorsted is the main town. Years ago, we Frisians were subjects of the Franks, but later a Dane came became a king. Became king. Well, really, Frisians not recognize these kings, but have to accept their power. We prefer to live. Tell me more. Frisians are a reserved people. They like to be left alone to their affairs, and the Danish are better lords than the Franks. As long as we pay taxes and accept their authority, they leave us alone. Many of us prefer our own government, without the interference from either the Franks or Danish, but this is impossible as long as we are divided and unable to raise an army. Our Ethelings, our noblemen prefer to serve the Danish. Without an Etheling to lead us, the Frillings, the freemen are unable to organize. Perhaps our fate is to be dominated by other people forever. Oh, don't say that. Alright, let's go. Hey, this guy is here. What is he doing here? Oh no, this is the king, never mind. A small camp stands next to a river. You see women and children between the cottages, watching warily. A number of men, few in number, but with an aggressive demeanor, come to meet you. A very tall man leads, the, leads them. I want to talk to the man. I do not know who you are, traveler, but my men are around you and will not hesitate to kill you if you keep moving. This is our land, don't go back the way you came. Uh, are you theatered? My name is Figur Mishkin, I want to talk. Theatered, I am here, your faithful Renegard. Figur Mishkin offered to escort me so I can explain what happened with your brother. That man with you is running guard? Damn traitor, you are rather too bold to come here after what you did to my brother. First we will kill your friends and then cut the blood eagle on you, as did your as did your Jarl to my brother. Oh damn, that's brutal. To arms, my men, kill them all. What? The battle is inevitable. Theater is furious upon seeing Renegard and orders his men to attack. Alright, let's fight. Stand here, stand here. Just follow me, guys. Uh, cool lightning effects. I like that. Hey, we are more than men, but uh, our people are just stupid recruits. Alright. Everyone hold position. And then spearmen charge, infantry charge. Skirmishers, who I think are just those uh, peasants. Charge. Yeah. Kill you all. Stab. 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 Oh, leave me alone. Oh no. That's horrible. fall on the ground with multiple injuries. Each time your heart beats more slowly and your vision fades away. This battle was too much for you, and death rides to meet you. While life escapes you, I hope that someone will just remember that there was once someone special called Figur Mishkin. Alright, let's try this again. Two armsmen. Actually, no, hold this position again. I'll send my spearmen to attack again. This is not as dark as it was before, that's good. Okay, spearmen charge, infantry charge, skirmishers, just hold on. Okay, charge. These guys are flanking. I really need a shield, man. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh oh. Leave me alone. Yes, help me, dude. Is that you? Hey, running guard. Thanks, man. Yeah. Only five dead, that's awesome. The fight was tough. Theodred's men fought like, I like lions, but your troops managed to finish them off. 
The other's corpse is among the bodies of his warriors. You have done your part. All that's left is to loot the other's camp, located just ahead. Ahead. <clears throat> ahead in a small camp, there are some women and children, the families of the rebels. They look scared, not knowing where to flee. Among these people are the wife and son of the other. It's a difficult choice. Maybe they will seek revenge in the future, but they aren't warriors. Uh... Loot the lair, but spare the inhabitants. Lost some reputation, but got some money and gained one morale. Cool.